Yay, I think we're live. We are live. We are live. I can see Griffin. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, everyone out there. Uh, my name is Griffin Kratz. I'm very excited to be a part of this to be having a, a first spin through the new History of Color album on Tumbra, uh, joined here by El Bujo and Barrio Lindo. There's so many things I wanna ask you about uh, as a longtime uh, fan of both of yours and of History of Color, but I thought I wanted to ask first, how you doing? Um, how, how are you both? Where are you both? Uh, how, how, is, how has today been? How are you? Hey, hey hello everyone. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. And um, everything here is starting to back to kind of normality. I'm in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, so after two months of lockdown, still feel a little bit weird to go outside. But yeah, yeah, finally we can go outside. So, so yeah, very, very curious about what is next on, <laughs> on this crazy year. And yeah, I'm also here in Paris in my kitchen, as you can see, with a cup of tea, you know, as we as we do, rocking it with a cup of tea. Um, and today was nice. Yeah, today was really nice. I went out for the first time and actually uh, met some friends, which was nice. And we went to a solar speaker factory, like guys who are a little company making solar solar powered speakers. So it's really cool. So it's kind of a little first, you know venture into the into the the world after two months of being on lockdown so yeah we're slowly starting to breathe a little bit more but yeah there's still a long way ahead that's good to hear good to hear um i imagine for so many folks they are uh familiar with both of your projects as solo artists but maybe not as familiar with history of color and it's been exciting for me as a longtime fan to see this album uh, be paired with a little bit more visibility around History of Color. And I'm curious, you know, um, I wanna get into the music. We're gonna listen to the, to the whole album here. Um, but I'm curious about what you folks want, uh, you know, what you want folks to know uh, about, this, about this album um, as, as we're about to, to get into it. Yeah, I mean, and maybe I'll, I'll go first, Douglas, and you can add something. But for this album has been a long time coming. So we released Calidoso um, 2016, I think now. Um, so, you know, it's like four years later. Uh, and we've been working on these tracks for quite a while. And, it, you know, it, it's always a bit more of a challenge to make an album. But we felt, you know, there was a, an instant connection between myself and Agustin in terms of making music, which is rare, you know, often with producers, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And with me and Agustin, from the very beginning, when we first started making music, it just clicked. Um, and, you know, so it was something we've been thinking, you know, released EPs and we've been thinking a long time about, about making an album. Um, and this is the result. And I think for me, at least, there's a certain freedom in producing under a different name and producing together, which mm -hmm. means we make music that we don't, think about so much i feel this album is more music that i haven't thought about and we just kind of let it go you know often if you make your own music you know what your own sound is you've identified that and i find with history of color we've had a little bit more freedom to experiment to do things that maybe we wouldn't do on our own solos and to find a different sound so that's how i that's how i feel what this album represents it doesn't sound like agustin it doesn't sound like me <laughs> which is good nice yeah, um, was was kind of a funny story about how this project started and the um, all the time that passed until we met uh, in person for first time was I think uh, three or four years and actually for everyone that uh, don't know, uh, Griffin was exactly the the guy that joined us in the same place. He booked us to play for first time as History of Color after Calidoso, our second EP, at a Priceless Festival in North California. 
that was uh, four years ago, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so it was funny because we already been like three, uh, at, the, at that point we've been already like three years working and we, Chica Chica was already starting, was like the first year of Chica Chica. So we, we had uh, like a daily conversation all the time, connection, music and label work uh, before meeting person. And, and was, it was a very nice moment uh, to, to meet Robin in Belden Town. <laughs> was very funny and of course the completely natural uh, connection and, and was very nice because Griffin and Priceless Crew prepare like a cabin with a small sound system uh, for us to prepare the, the live set because until that point we didn't have like a proper situation to, to work on the live set so we had like I think like one or two days uh, in the in the cabin and then we played and was amazing so that's also the reason why griffin is here singing with us uh, so we call him the godfather so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's it's very nice and and very free collaboration pro, uh, process with robin like it's completely no no rules no restrictions. He, if I send something and he want to erase everything, uh, he can do it, and I, if I can do it as well if I want. So it's not a uh, limitation, you know. So it's very it's very nice, very refreshing, and yeah, and uh, it's it's funny because for a long time some people listen history of color, but they didn't know that uh, El Bu and Barrio Lindo are history of color. So. Yeah, now also we are trying to, okay, hello. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that this this album is sort of the ultimate hello. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and I think that that might, might be a good segue um, if folks are ready. Maybe we should take a spin through the first first side of, of the album. And then I'm curious to talk more about your, your collaboration process. Um, Augustine, this is a test pressing? This is a vinyl? test pressing. We, we just received the test pressing two days ago. We are super excited and looking forward. The vinyl is going to be ready like in one month or something like that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk more about uh, the process and all the people involved. Yeah. But if, if you want, uh, we can play uh, side A. It's OK? That sounds good to me. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> I'm gonna go and fill up my uh, glass of wine. Just like a cup of tea and a glass of wine. I think is the perfect combination. No está sonando, ¿no? Ok, ok. First thing, wait a sec. Okay, okay, let's start again. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Once more with feeling. Let's try it from the top. This is like a rewind. Rewind. Yeah, exactly. You have to go like that. I was witch, 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 witch. On the replay. <laughs>
I think this album's great, but I'm biased. Thank you. I just, that's amazing. Um, question for you, that second track was a collaboration between you both and the venerable M. Rooks. Rooks, I don't know how to say it. Uh, we call him Mr. Rooks out here. Put your best German yeah. accent on. Uh, yeah. Um, is there a Zoom filter for accent? Anyway, um, I'm curious, how did you go about choosing your collaborators? For this album, there's uh, M. Rooks in the first half, and then an artist I'm not familiar with. Was it uh, Magapai? Magapi? Ma Magupi, yeah. Ha yes. How did you okay. go about you coming across these folks and working with them on this? Well, we we are good friends with M. Rooks, uh, and also we admire a lot. I both of us really like his music and and his records and his labels <laughs> and his live suits. <laughs> No, so it was at some point um, we we were thinking, okay, we we could invite him to to try uh, to collaborate in a track, and we start a, a project that actually I think that was very different than the result. So that talk a lot about the collaborations and how how far can go um, yeah it was very very nice you said earlier um when you two are collaborating it's sort of it, less rules less restriction you're very open to the other person making a lot of changes do you have to kind of communicate that to another person stepping in and is it, is, is it different bringing someone into that kind of environment? Do you have to kind of know, have a level of trust before you even start that process? Well, we, Roy and Go, you. <laughs> I'm sure, but hopefully we're gonna say the same thing. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, we, as I was said with, with Martin, like we, we know and, and trust him and you have to have the same level of, of openness, I feel like. We gave him the track in one state and he took it and worked on it and took it to a completely different place that we loved 
you know so i think at some point if you're going to be open to collaboration then you have to you have to kind of be like okay let's see what happens and you have to be open to, to people taking a different direction and and it's good as well sometimes to for your own music to be taking a different direction so i think generally yeah the rule is to just stay open you know unless they it comes back and we really hate it but yeah. <laughs> that was never yeah. going to happen no we got rocks that, um, not going to happen hopefully because of sort of the relationship and understanding you have going yeah. into the process you yeah. said that that when when martin got a hold of of that track in progress it changed quite a bit is is there a way is it possible to put into words kind of how it felt before how it felt after or what what those changes were no, uh, it's a good question. I mean, I can't remember the track. I don't yeah. really remember how it's done. No. <laughs> so Maybe we can release it on like a, a B-sides. The behind the scenes version, yeah. Um, but you know, as, as well, we, we wasn't like the proper track, finished track was, was some part like a little arrangement or something to give him space and freedom and everything to so he put his own his own hands on on it, you know. So was just some draft, some ideas, but actually I don't remember how it started. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that that's that's really interesting about this this work that I I, I think is un, I think is unusual is that it was three years in the making. And so yeah. a lot has happened in that time. And one of the things that you touched on before, that like back in 2016, kind of, like having the opportunity to, to gather you folks in, in the same place at the same time for the first time was wonderful. But I, I'm curious about since then, you've, you've had more chances to be together. Um, you've done a few more live performances. And then did you also have some time together in the same space at the same time working on this album? Yeah. Um, okay. So what's, what's very different this process? Because for example, the, the first CP was actually very fast. I, I remember like uh, at first Robin sent me two ideas and I sent uh, to him like two ideas. And like in, after two days, we have like a, four tracks almost ready and then we produce two more okay and then with Calidoso with the second EP was also very fast I think we produce it like in two or three weeks uh, and this time I don't know why but it took a, a, a lot of time but we didn't have uh, the uh, like a, a proper idea about what we wanted to to do as album or I don't know, also a uh, few tracks, I think three or four tracks uh, at the end, we decide to uh, to leave it out of the of the record. Um, but also, yeah, Robin can, can tell us a, a little bit more, but this time, since, since we met, uh, we start to see each other more and more frequently. Also changed a lot because I, I after that that year, after that summer um, in California, I uh, I moved from Buenos Aires to Berlin. So since then, we were uh, finally in, in the same in the in the same continent. Before when we start, I think at the very first beginning, Robin was in Amsterdam. Then he was in Mexico, and I was all the time in Buenos Aires. And um, after we met, okay, one year after, uh, both back to both moved to Europe, from into Paris, and I I moved to Berlin. So yeah, it was more easy and more frequently to meet to meet. And about the process, okay, Robin, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the process. We we hired a studio for the first time, so we actually spent time in a studio together in Paris, which is we never done before. So that was also kind of completely new to the process, uh, completely different, you know, and producing together in a studio, you you know, it, it's a different experience and it changes how you produce. And it was really great to finally be in the same room and make music together, you know? Um, and yeah, we've played, I would guess I could, we could count on one hand or two hands, the amount of shows we've actually played of History of Color. 
was not, not very many. So yeah, and, and I was curious. You spent time working on this in a studio in Paris. Was this around the same time you had a history of color gig on the riverboat? Yeah, it was like the day after, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, looked, yeah, that's one of the history of color okay. gigs we've done. <laughs> it looked fine, you know, and I'm curious about with this limited, you know, more limited opportunity to present your music live. And I have to say, from my perspective, as a as an event producer, even the first time these folks played together, the amount of effort they put into actually having a live set with, with live playing happening, with room for improvisation was so impressive. Um, uh, is it, uh, how does it feel? I mean, like we're in a moment right now where you have this new music coming out. I'm sure you had plans to present this music live in some context that, that those plans had to be changed. Yeah, actually, okay, we, we didn't play many times and every time that we play, we've been exploring different ways to present uh, or to play together, you know. Um, so, the, we actually, we, we're supposed to play this year in Osora Festival in Hungary, but uh, it's, it's, it's cancelled, unfortunately, uh, like every festival. Uh, so, yeah, let's see how how this continues and when we can back to the dance floor. <laughs> but uh, we we really enjoy to to play together. It's very very nice uh, because usually we are by ourselves, uh, like alone in the stage, and then sharing with someone, like sharing the the little stress before and sharing the the happiness after, the joy after. So it's it's, it's very nice. Yeah, I think something you you miss if you're an electronic music producer is like the band feeling, right? You know, if you're in a band, there's a feeling of when you play live of being able to like feed off each other to play together as a band. And often if you're a, a producer and you play live, you're playing on your own, you know, and there's like you miss that element. So as soon as there's more than one person, you have this kind of back and forth where one person does something and you're like, oh, that's really interesting. Why don't we do this? And it's a different energy. So I think... For us now, yeah, it's a pity that we've had the shows cancelled, but yeah, hopefully sometime soon we'll get be able to, you know, present this stuff together because it's, for me, it changed a lot to be able to play in the, as, a, as a duo and not as a solo. Yeah, and it's a particular challenge of this scenario where you folks are not physically together. Playing live together online does not seem to be a technical reality at this point, sadly. No. So, um, I want to mention, folks, if you're watching live, if you're on YouTube, if you have a question you'd like to ask, please put that in the chat. If we have time, we'll get to it. We want to get to the, the B side of the album. But I also, maybe before we do that, I want to make sure to ask about your collaborators on this release. The design, the album cover, the art is, is really nice. What can you tell us about, about that? Okay, it's we are very very happy. It's actually it's an analog uh, photo by Maxime Bessier, uh, a friend from Guatemala, based for a long time in Paris. Um, the the photo, the scenario, it's in in Sicily. Um, the Stromboli volcano uh, looks like uh, in in behind. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very nice analog photo that Maxim was working with us, like uh, checking like the his um, yeah checking some films and things that he he had, and then all the scanning process also was very interesting. And as always, uh, Klaus Smith, uh, who is our main designer of Shika Shika, was also helping us helping us a lot to the finish the the full cover and um, we we really like to to work with friends uh, we are very lucky that we have a very talented friends so it's it's very nice to to collaborate and to make them uh, be part of uh, of this project as well you said there was an analog photography and the prints were very large 
Yeah, like uh, the the size of, of of the scan file is like massive. I don't know, like two meters and a half, something very wow. very very huge. <laughs> um, and actually, I, uh, several uh, few photos, like I don't know how is, how is it said in English, or uh, Robin, like uh, superpuestas. Uh, superimposed, no, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's it's uh, original. It's like that. It's it's not uh, created by Photoshop or nothing. It's just original. The film, uh, like uh, taking like two photos uh, without to move the 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 frame, you know. And mm -hmm. it's it's very nice analog uh, process. So we and, and actually was was interesting at the beginning. We say okay, we. We are thinking to to do like a black and white um, cover, and we start to do black and white. And at the end, uh, at some point, he showed us, okay, actually the original photo was with a little bit of color that is just the sun in behind, and it's, it's this little color uh, and changed a lot. And uh, we really like uh, that the history of color has some, <laughs> some little color as well. I am curious about the name too. What is the story of the name? Um, Antumbra, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a, a really deep um, <laughs> a meaning of why we choose, but we, we really liked it. We, we felt that it was a little bit more dark somehow, but uh, this record, so. Yeah, we we were thinking about the the light and and the and the and the darkness and and how how it works. Uh, Robin can explain a little bit more <laughs> better in English, I think. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, and Tumber, I think is the it's like the shadow around an eclipse. Like a, the, if you have an eclipse and like the light around. Uh -huh. uh, an eclipse as well, like a type of shadow, I think. Um, yeah. And I think yeah, if you listen to the album. For us, definitely, it feels darker, which is maybe a reflection of the times we're living in. Um, and the concept, you know, we started with history of color, and there's always been a lot of references to color in the music titles, because it's also something I think this is, for, for me, it's, really, it's something fascinating, you know, the, the link between color and music. You know, syn synesthesia, which is like the how people like see music through colors. Um, and so, yeah, as Agu said, we originally had thought of like history of color, black and white. And then we thought, mm -hmm. well, maybe actually like, and Tumbra is a bit more fino, <laughs> elegante <laughs> as the name. Um, and it sums up the, uh, the concept behind the album and, and, and the kind of the feeling we had of, of listening to it. Okay. Well, I think we should, we should take a spin through the, the B side. Let's okay. go into the darkness. Let's do Let's it. Go. Okay.
Gorgeous. So nice. So nice. Gosh, I really, I love, I love this album. I love that collection of tracks. That last one, uh, Apu Punchao, that was, if that's the, the like current like single that's been available, that track for me as a listener has really stuck. Um, it has been the soundtrack to my living room <laughs> for a while. Um, question from the chat, great question. Uh, is there a reason that you chose to release that track first? Yeah, I think it's, uh, for me, it's one of my favorites from the track and it's actually a really old track that we kind of revisited and like refreshed and, uh, and you know, found something there and, and took it back. Um, I don't know, it just felt right for the for the moment i think um yeah i, you... I think it's, it's the the first track that we produce for like all, all these tracks yeah is 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 the oldest track and actually it was nice we, actually at some point we didn't think to include it because before it was quite different and actually we we showed um, to to Embrax, uh, the the demo of the album, uh, and yeah, okay, we we need some feedback, and and then we we talking about this track, and yeah, he we, we realized okay, it sounds uh, sounds a little bit old. So after that, okay, you say okay, maybe maybe we need to continue or change it, uh, and. And Robin and me, we, we we took it again after I think like four years or something like that, uh, and and we changed pretty much the the track and the structure and we record a lot of things and took out a lot of other things. Um, but yeah, we we really like this track and I don't know, I I think that was a, a good a, a good choice. <laughs> I think so too, certainly. Yeah, I think the um, I think uh, the comment was like it's beautifully sad, which is something we'd never like, I'd never thought of before, right? right? Which is like now, at least as soon as I read that and listened to it, I was like, oh, I suppose it is, uh, which is maybe quite fitting for like the times we live in, which are kind of, in a strange way, kind of beautifully sad at the moment. So it's I think in uh, and it felt like the track to close the album, you know, it's a track to like the album's quite dark and a bit more aggressive, and then this track is like a kind of come down. Yeah, yeah, both both grounding, but also feels like a like a release and an elevation to me too. It's sort of like a pressure release valve, and has been certainly a contrast to yep. the environment that I find myself in as as a super fan. Um, mm-hmm. Apologies for some of the audio troubles we had here today, but hopefully that's a good taste of what's coming. The album is available tomorrow everywhere. Yeah, let, 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 we, we just change a little bit the plans because the, the thing, because we really want to have a proper first listen. So we decided to put it after this, this talk, oh. we're going to put on Bandcamp. Okay. So, Tomorrow gonna be in Spotify on the rest of platforms, but uh, like in 20 minutes or so, we're gonna put it okay. in Minecraft because we are. This is just like <laughs> this is how Shika Shika works. Yeah, it's, it's informal. That's great. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great news. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. Okay. And yeah, also I before uh, you you thought you asked uh, us about the collaborations and and in the. In the third track in Cinco y Cuatro, uh, we invite to collaborate to Magupi, that is his producer and marimba player from Portugal. We also released two tracks of him, like in our Botana series last year. And it's like amazing musician. Like it's, it's incredible, super, super good musician. And so and we have this track that before he did, he recorded this marimba, it was okay. We we weren't very sure if included or not, because yeah, it's it's a five uh, four track, you know. It's not for uh, and we did it like a purpose to try to do something uh, different, 
Um, and when he sent the marimbas, and then I, I recorded a synthesizer or something more, and uh, okay, definitely needs to, to be there. And uh, uh, also give like uh, another featuring for, for the album was good. That's great. And that, you know, it's something that I appreciate about, about this project in particular, um, doing a track in 5-4, pushing things forward, being a little challenging, not resting where things are or have been, seems to be something in common between History of Color and, and Shika Shika. And if I could wax poetic for a second, just as a, as a super fan, I really feel like this album uh, starts to scratch at the vision of Shika Shika of, of music without borders. This album is really hard to put in a geographic context. It's really hard to pin down. I feel like it it transcends some of those qualities that music often has. And it's just beautiful to, to watch you to build this together and keep exploring. So thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, and thank you for doing what you do. We oh, appreciate thank it. You. Well, no, thank a big you thank you to you, Griffin. Support. Yeah, I mean, as, as I was said at the beginning, Griffin has been like a long time friend and supporter of of our music and of the label. So yeah, big thank you to you for the support and for hosting us tonight. And yeah, thanks to everybody that, that watched. Yes. Hopefully we'll see you soon in real life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully soon. <laughs> okay, so we, we're going to put the album in Bandcamp in a few minutes. Um, we also um, uh, gonna press it on, on vinyl, as you can see. Uh, it's already the pre-order on our bank camp, so we invite you to to support this project and this label that is basically made by love and, <laughs> and just a lot of home homemade and handmade and work. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Good okay. night, everybody. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Griffin. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>